Welcome to the second lesson, which is on probabilities using a calculator. This is for the normal distribution section of the unit. Um, so, of course, you're going to need to have your GDC ready. So, please, if you haven't got it already, please pause and go grab your GDC. Okay, now let's go. Um, right, so what we're asked to do on this one, this is just a more so a warm-up of lesson one. Um, fill in the missing percents on the x-axis on the diagram. So just try to remember this is a general shape of the normal distribution and it's symmetrical around this point here. And what was this point again? That's right, this point was the mean. Um, and one line out would be the mean plus one standard deviation and one line back would be the mean minus one standard deviation. So you want to write those in. Can you remember what percent was here and here and it's the same value? That's right, yep, it's 34.8. 13%, so 34.13% here as well. So we can fill in those percents. If we go an extra line out, that's the mean plus two standard deviations. And a line back is the mean minus two standard deviations. So fill those in too. And of course, if we know this one's 13.59%, then of course the other one has to be the same, 13.59%. And then moving out again, we've got the mean plus three standard deviations and the mean minus three standard deviations. As we said here, the percent that's represented by the space underneath the graph is 2.15% in that case. And it's the same for this one because it's symmetrical around the mean. And outside of there is just a tiny percent represented out here, which is 0.13%. And remember, these represents the percent of the area under the graph. So hence why these percents are bigger, because you can see a bigger chunk of area um, lies underneath that graph. And it gets smaller and smaller as you move out because there's less area underneath the graph. Okay, so moving on to the next one, uh, let's see. So the waiting time for an elevator, uh, normally the waiting time, sorry, for an elevator are normally distributed with a mean of 1.5 minutes. So try to think what's that in seconds and a standard deviation of 20 seconds. And the reason why we need to think of 1.5 minutes in seconds is that we need to have consistent units. So either change 20 seconds to 0.333 recurring um, minutes, but that's kind of awkward to change it into a decimal. So you're better off changing 1.5 minutes into seconds. So 1.5 minutes means one and a half minutes, which how many seconds is that? Yes, you're right, it's 90 seconds. So we've got a mean of 90. It's good to write out what your mean is. Remember, it's this symbol here, mu. The mean is 90 and the standard deviation, which is this symbol here, sigma, is 20, according to the question. It's good to write that out. First of all, you're asked to sketch a normal distribution to illustrate this information, indicating clearly the mean and the times within one, two, and three standard deviations of the mean. So a similar curve to kind of what we've got up here, except they want us to fill in the actual numbers, like the mean is 90. The mean plus one standard deviation would be 90 plus 20, so 110. So we've got our little curve here, um, and then you want to mark in your x-axis as well. So mark in your x-axis, I'm sure you've drawn your normal curve by now. Um, you might want to mark in the mean, so mark in the mean value. In our case, it's a 90. <clears throat> then you want to start to move out the mean plus one standard deviation. What is 90 plus 20? It is 110. So 90 plus, mean plus one standard deviation is 90 plus 20, so it's 110. The mean minus one standard deviation would be that's right, it would be 70 because the mean minus 70, sorry, the mean minus 20, 90 minus 20 is 70. Now let's move up. Uh, the mean plus two standard deviations would be 90 plus 20 plus 20 again, which would be 130. And the mean minus two standard deviations here would be 90 minus 20 minus 20. So that would take you to 50. The mean plus three standard deviations would be 90 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20. So that would be 150. And the mean minus three standard deviations would be 90 minus 20 minus 20 minus 20, which would take you to 30. Um, don't forget to label your axis as well, with the random variable x. That's also important. Um, and you can have the mean hanging out there a little bit if you want. So we've got our nice, smooth, normal distribution curve. So we've finished question A there. We've drawn the curve and we've marked in the times that they wanted. They didn't ask us to mark in the percents, so that's why I didn't do that. Find the probability that a person waits longer than two minutes and 10 seconds for the elevator. So first of all, how many seconds? So two minutes, that's two times 60 plus 10 seconds. 
So what would that equal? That would equal, excuse, maybe just show you working out first of all, 60 plus 60 plus 10 equals 130 seconds. Right. Okay, yeah, so 130 seconds. So look on your graph. So where is 130 seconds? They say it waits longer than 130 seconds. So that means this area up here. So longer than 130 seconds, not less than 130 seconds, but longer. So it's this area plus this area here. So we can show the working out for that. Remember it was, my way of doing it is I tend to think, okay, the mean splits it into 50%, 50%. So it's going to be 50% minus this area, minus this area. That's the quicker way for me to do it rather than doing that one plus that one. It's up to you though. So 50 minus 34.13 minus 13.59. That, what does that equal as a percent? That's 2.28%, which divide by um, 100. Remember, you turn 10 percent into a decimal. You need to divide by 100. So you divide that by 100, you'll get 0 0.0228. Because they want the probability, they didn't ask for the percentage, they want the probability. So that's why I converted it to a decimal. Um, now, find the probability again that the person waits less than 1 minute and 10 seconds for the elevator. So one minute plus 10 seconds, how many seconds is that? That's 70 seconds. So less than one minute and 10 seconds, where is 70 seconds on the graph? It's here. And they want the probability that, that they wait less than that. So this area here. So this area plus this area plus that area. So again, you could just add them all up, add up that area plus that plus that. Or you could do my way of just taking 50 and minus this area, which is 34.13. If you're wondering where I'm getting those percents from, I'm getting them from here. If you added them all up separately, you do 13.59 plus 2.15 plus 0 0.13, but I instead do 50 minus 34.13, and that tells me what's remaining here. That's just my preferred way of doing it. Um, so you'll see that 50 minus 34.13, so 50 minus this tells us what's all over here. And that equals 15.87%. Um, what's that as a decimal? Because we want the probability, so let's express it as a decimal by dividing by 100. would give us 0 0.159 to 3 sig figs. You could have also said 0 0.1587, that's also okay because that's an exact answer. Um, and now move on to expectation questions. 200 people are observed and the length of time they wait for the elevator is noted. Calculate the number of people expected to wait less than 50 seconds for the elevator. So let's see, where's 50 seconds? 50 seconds is here. Let's work out the probability first. So we'll work out the percent, convert it to a probability, and then you times the probability by 200 to work out how many people we expect there to be. So again, I'm just gonna do, because it's this area here, less than 50 is this area here, we could add that and that area together. But again, I'm gonna just do, it's probably just as fast to do that really, but I'm gonna do 50 minus that area minus that area. So 50 minus 34.13 minus the 13.59 equals 2.28%. Now we've got to convert that into a decimal by dividing by 100, which will give us 0 0.0228, and times that by 200 people. Plug that into your calculator, what do you get? You get 4.56, which is around about five people. So approximately, we would expect there to be five people to wait less than 50 seconds if you observe 200 people. Um, okay, so that's the end of the warm-up. Let's move on to the next part. Again, you'll need your calculators for a lot of this. So lesson two, probabilities using a calculator. Um, just a reminder, the area under the graph is also called the thing starting with P. It is the probability. So you might have thought percentage, but what I was looking for was the word probability. So the area under the graph is, represents a probability of an event occurring. So if you are asked to find the probability, you're being asked to find the area under the normal distribution curve between the two given points on the horizontal axis. So remember in general, the whole area under a normal distribution, what is it defined as being equal to? You might have thought 100% um, or 1. So 100% or 1, because basically it's like 0.5 plus 0.5. Um, we can say that two points on this area lie between x is negative infinity, like over here. So we could say that, because, you know, in theory this goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. So we can say it starts at negative infinity and therefore it ends at positive infinity. 
So we can say that the two values, that the area under the graph lies between the x bound negative infinity and positive infinity. So we can put in positive infinity there. And just a reminder that the mean is in the center there. And we use that little symbol mu to do the mean. Um, so the area on this graph below, so notice that the shaded area in green here lies between which two values of x? And so it lies between this value and this value here, so between 8 and 11. The 10's not there to confuse you, the 10's just the mean. So notice the mean cuts through the centre again. So this area below lies between the x values, 8 and 11. What is the value of mu, the mean, in this case? Obviously it's the part where it cuts the normal distribution in half, so it's 10. Um, and then just by looking at the graph, just make a rough estimate of what this area would be as a decimal. So remember it has to be less than 1 because this whole area under the normal distribution is defined as being equal to 1. So what would you, what proportion of 1 would you say that would be? Like is it 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8? 0 0.8 is probably a bit high. Um, I had a guess I said around about 0.4. You would have been okay if you said point, around 0.5 or something like that as well a little bit higher, that's okay. We're just trying to get a rough idea. What would that area under there be? Okay, moving on to the next one. So how do I find the exact value of this area using my GDC? So as the topic is about the normal distribution, you need to look for the word distribution on your GDC. Where is it located? So let's see. Can you see the word distribution on your GDC? And I've given you a clue, it's in blue. So distribution, a little clue, it's around this area. Can you see it? Can you see it? Yep, it's right there. So see the word distribution is in blue above. So where is it located? It's located above the vars. So it's located above the vars button. Um, so to open this, you click on second and vars. Just showing you a demonstration of that. Click on the second button and vars that opens up distribution. You should see this list, which you do. Um, the only two options we use in our IB course is the second one, second normal CDF, and the third one, inverse norm. So I've um, highlighted them in yellow. You might want to do that too. So they're the only two ones we use. We never use the first one, never choose normal PDF. So in our course, we only use two or three. Um, okay, so let's move down from there. So to find the area under the curve, which is the probability, you select the second option, which is, second option is two normal CDF. So it's this one here. So write that down, two normal CDF. Um, and let's do that. And then these prompts should appear. So let's press enter. So it's asking for the lower. So you can click, like just ignore the number in there for now. That's just a default setting. The lower is, what is the lower boundary? So if it was for this area, it would be 8. So lower is the lower boundary for the area, e.g. 8 in this case. Um, the next one you can see it's asking for is the upper. The upper is asking for what would be the upper boundary of the area. So let's write that down. It's the upper boundary for the area e.g. 11 in this case. Um, and then you'll see what it's also asking for. It's asking for the mean. So the mean is basically this value. You can see it's also written here. The mean. Mu is the mean. And sigma, what does that stand for again? You're right, that's the standard deviation. So the standard deviation doesn't appear on the graph, but it's written in the notation. It's the number up here, which I think is 2.3. So the mean is 10. This means x is normally distributed with a um, mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 2.3. Ignore the square. Okay, so this is just defining what those things in the calculator are asking for. So now let's move on to an actual example. Now let's try doing this for the example on the previous page where we've got 8, 10, 11 and mean of 10, standard deviation of 2.3. We're being asked to find the area under the curve, which is the probability for the following. So remember you press second, vars, normal CDF, that will find the area underneath. We want to know what is this green area. Um, what is our lower bound? Our lower bound for the green area is 8. What is our upper bound? Our upper bound for the green area is 11. What's our mean? It's 10. You can see it there too. 
what's our standard deviation? It's 2.3. So don't put in 2.3 squared. Now let's plug that into the calculator. So 8 is our lower, 11 is our upper, and press enter as well. Mean is 10, standard deviation is 2.3. So see I've got all the right values in there, 8, 11, 10, 2.3. Then you just go down to paste and you press enter. And notice this will come up, it's just reminding you what you found, so you press enter again. There it is, there's our area. So we just need to round this to three sig figs. So it will be 0 0.476 because the 8 will round the 5 up to a 6. So 0 0.476. If you're not sure, then of course just write out the whole value and then round your answer to three sig figs. That's a good idea in your exams in case you make mistakes in rounding to three sig figs. And that's it, that's the area. So this area, we estimated it was around 0.4. Um, and end up being about 0.476 exactly. So that's how you can use your calculator to find out the exact area under the graph. Um, so what about one which looks like this? Um, okay, so it's saying here, x is normally distributed with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 2.3 again. Um, and let's see, what would the lower limit for this one be? So the lower limit for this one, you probably guessed already, it's negative infinity. So, but how can we put negative infinity into the graph? We can't actually do that. So, see the upper bound is 12, that's easy, but the lower bound goes on forever to negative infinity. So, we can't enter negative infinity into the GDC. There's no special button for it at the moment. However, we can enter in a value close to this, e.g. negative 1 times 10 to the power of 99. That's just a really big, big negative number, like negative 1 to the power of 10, so it's ne negative 1 times 10 to the power of 99. So 1e99 means negative 1 times 10 to the power of 99. To make the e on the calculator, you use the ee button. And have a look around. Can you see the ee button? A little clue, it's around here. Ee button, yep, it's right here. See the ee above there. That's how you make the ee button, the e button. So which is located above the comma. So it's located above the comma button, as you can see. There's a comma button, ee is right there. Um, so our lower, we would have to put in as negative 1, E99. Our upper, you can see from the graph, is 12. So just reminding you, negative 1, E99 means negative infinity. Um, the mean is 10. Standard deviation for this one happens to be 2.3 as well, just by coincidence. Um, so what's the probability that X is less than? Notice it's saying probability X is less than 12. So let's plug all that into the calculator, do a demonstration. Clear. Let's go second, vars, normal CDF, you can just click two, that opens it as well. Our lower is negative one, and then E, so second comma, nine nine, so that's how I made my negative one E nine nine. Upper bound is 12, mean is 10, standard deviation is 2.3. See everything's right, go paste, enter we should get 0 0.808. So what I strongly suggest is write it out unrounded and then round to three sig figs. So 0 0.808 because next to the 7 is a 7, which rounds that first 7 up. So let's do some more little examples. Okay, what about one which looks like this? So here we've got our lower limit, you can see is 9, our mean is 10, standard deviation just happens to be 2.3 again. What's our upper limit? Um, so you probably guessed it's positive infinity. Positive infinity, how do we put positive infinity into the calculator? We just, instead of saying negative 1 E99, which would be down here, we say positive 1 E99. So we say positive 1 e 99 which means 1 times 10 to the power of 99. Again, to make the e, e, the e, you use the e, e button. Our lower would be, our lower would be, think about it, it would be 9. Our upper would be positive 1 e 99 so just 1 e 99 Our mean would be 10, and our standard deviation would be, from here, 2.3, not 2.3 squared. Let's practice putting that in the calculator. Uh, so let's go second vars normal CDF. So our lower is 9, 
it's good to write out your little plans, it helps. And then it's one, E, remember we go second, comma, E, nine, nine. That's our positive infinity. Mean is 10, standard deviation is 2.3. That's easy enough. Paste, enter. Okay, so what would that be rounded to three sig figs? Again, write it unrounded first and then write it out to three sig figs. So that'd be 0 0.668 because next to the eight is a one. 0 0.668. So we're just finding the areas under the graph. That makes sense. Like, look to see, does your answer make sense? Like, clearly it's got at least half, so it's got to be more than 0.5. So 0 0.668 makes about sense. Um, here's another example using the terminology from Lesson 1. X is a random variable that is normally distributed with a mean of 70, so we can write out mu as 70, and a standard deviation of 4. So sigma equals 4. It's a good idea to write these things out. So find the probability that x is between 70 and 74. So that's what this means. It means that the mean is 70, the standard deviation is 4, our lower bound is 70, and our upper bound is 74. That's what this all means. So that's a nice easy one. Plug in mean is 70, standard deviation is 4. Let's do another example on here. Number 2, normal CDF. Plug in what we've got. We've got 70. 74 is our upper bound, according to the question. Our mean is 70. Our standard deviation is 4. Paste and enter again. So what, again, write it unrounded and then round to 3 sig fig. So that'd be 0 0.341 because next to the 1 is a 3. 0 0.341. Uh, similar one here, we've got the same mean. Same mean, same standard deviation. But our lower limit this time, they want the probability that the lower limit is 68 and the upper limit is 72. Plug that into the calculator, similar to before. I'll do it again. A few demos can ever hurt. 2, so 68 for our lower, 72 for our upper. Always just check are you putting in the right numbers. We've got 70 and 4 again, so in a way I don't need to write those again. What's that to three sig figs? It'd be 0 0.383 because next to the three is a nine. Uh, this one's interesting. We've still got the same mean, same standard deviation, but it's saying probability that x is less than 65. So less than 65, that might help to do a little diagram or something. That can always help if you want. Um, so let's see, like a little diagram, for example probability that x is less than 65. So if our mean is 70, this point here is 70, so 65 would be a bit to the left. So probability that x is less than 65, what would be our lower bound? It would be negative infinity. So remember we put in negative 1 e99. Our upper bound would be just a 65. And let's plug that into the calculator now. So second bars normal CDF, we never select the first one, negative 1, second comma, E99. So negative infinity is our lower bound. Our upper bound is 65. Um, and we still have a mean of 70 and standard deviation of 4 because it relates to the same question. So paste, enter. Uh, what would that be to three sig figs? That would be 0 0.106 because next to the 5 is a 6. It can be a good idea to do these sketches all the time, like, for example, for this first one. You can do a little sketch. Obviously, this is going to be the area because the mean is 70, and 74 would just be to the right of it. So between 70 and 74 would just be a little bit from the mean upwards. Um, between 68 and 72, if the mean is 70, then the area would be somewhere in between like either side. So 68 would be to the left of the mean, 72 would be to the right of the mean because the mean is 70. Um, okay, so draw a rough diagram of A and C and shade the area. So same thing again. Rough diagram, do your normal distribution. Um, sorry, you can't see it properly. So the mean here should say 70. So if you want, we can write in, oops, let's write in 70. So the mean here is 70, and the upper limit is 74. And then shade the area in between those two. 
Um, this next one for C, it's this diagram here. So do a rough diagram of it again. And again, it's saying that um, the mean is 70 down the bottom. If you can't see it, it's just meant to say 70. And this is negative infinity over here. Which we put in the calculator as negative 1899, but on the graph we could write negative infinity. And 65 is the upper bound. Okay, we're going to our last page now. Here we go. So example, suppose x is normally distributed with a mean of 56 and a standard deviation of 2.1. So let's write that out. Mu is 56, standard deviation is 2.1. Not 2.1 squared, but 2.1. Uh, find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 55. I'm not sure if it says 45 or 55 on yours, but it was meant to be 55, I think. Um, or did I change it to 45? Yeah, let's change it to 55. So, um, so you change yours to 55 if it doesn't say that already. So what we've got is we um, can draw a diagram. So you can draw this little diagram down here. The mean, let's draw in the mean first, it's 56. And so less than or equal to 45, let's see, would be kind of, we'll do it down here. I'm oh, sorry, 55. So 55 would be, not down here, it would be kind of closer to here. So 55, and because 56 is here, so it's basically just a little left to it. And x is greater than or equal to 55, so above. So it's this area out here. So shade it a bit better than what I'm doing, of course. So our lower bound is 55, our upper bound is positive infinity. So remember, try to remember how we put that in the calculator. Our mean is 56 and 2.1, that's easy enough. But our lower bound is 55, our upper bound is positive 1E99. And again, you'll put that in the calculator, like we do, second vars and so on, and you'll get 0.683. Um, for this one, again, change it. If it says 45, change it to 55. That's what I meant to have for some reason. So find the probability that it's between 55 and 56. So if the mean is 56, then 55 would be just to the left of it. And it would be shading this area here. Um, yep, so in a way, like a way, you could put it into the calculator, that's fine. Just plug it all into the GDC, plug, plug in lower bound is 55, upper bound is 56, mean is 56, standard deviation is 2.1. If you wanted to do it really quickly, notice it's the same as this area, but minus this half here, minus the 0.5, because to the right of the mean, the area is 0.5. So you could just do that minus 0.5. So see this area is the same as A, subtract 0.5. So 0.683 minus 0 0.5 will give you 0.8183. So you could have done that by the on the calculator this way too. That's fine. You get the same answer. Okay, last question for this lesson. A manufacturer makes screws which are supposed to be 30 millimeters long. So assuming that the mean is 30 millimeters long. In reality, the length of the screws, oh sorry, the mean's down here. In reality, the length L of the screws is normally distributed with a mean of 30.1 millimeters and a standard deviation of 0.76 millimeters. So our mean is 30.1, let's write that out. Our standard deviation, sigma, is 0 0.76. And they're both in millimeters, so it's fine. We don't need to adjust any units. Um, find the probability that the length is greater than 31. So our mean is 30.1, so 31 would be to the right of that, and it would be this area here. So think our lower bound would be 31. What would be our upper bound? it would be positive infinity, so 1E99. Our mean is just these two numbers and standard deviation. 30.1, 0 0.76. Again, you do second vars, plug in everything, and then there you go. You should get 0 0.118. Um, probability that it's between 30.2 and 33. So if 30.1 is here, 30.2 is just to the right of that and 33 would be further to the right. So in, in between these two values, it's not going on out here, just in between those two values. So our lower is 30.2, our upper is 33. Mean and standard deviation are the same as before. Plug that into the calculator, doing your second VARS normal CDF, and you'll get 0 0.448. Probability that the length is less than or equal to 29. 
um, less, so 30.1 is the mean, so 29 would be to the left of that, and less than all the way to negative infinity. So our lower bound is negative infinity, which we write in as negative 1 E99. That's negative. Um, upper is 29. Mean and standard deviation are the same. Feel free to pause and plug this into the calculator to see what you get. And when you do that, you should get 0.739. And very last question. How many screws from a sample of 300 would you expect to be at least 31 millimetres in length? So look back and think, have we answered any like that? So at least 31 millimetres means 31 or greater. So it would be this one here. So we worked out the probability is 0 0.118 and just times it by 300 to work out how many screws we would expect to be greater than. We would expect 35.4, which is about 35 screws. So what you do is you take the probability, multiply it by how many times you repeated the experiment, like a sample of 300, so times by 300, and you get 35 screws in total. And that's the end of that lesson. Um, and so maybe you want to clear that. Just a reminder of how to enter in things. Go second vars to normal CDF. Um, so imagine your lower bound was 56, for example. How would you put in the upper bound? You would go one second if it was if it was positive infinity. One second comma e99. That's easy to forget. So don't forget those two skills. Um, and that's the end of the lesson.